Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Hi guys and welcome to another Fool of the Week. And this week's Fool is Sir Peter Bottomley. Wow, I love that name. Anyway, Peter has been living on the dole. Sorry, sorry. Peter has been an MP since 1975. 1975. I'm sure there are many people on this channel not yet born when uh, Sir Peter first entered the House of Commons. Anyway, he currently represents Worthing West constituency. Now, Peter was in the news this week over what he calls a desperately difficult MP salary of just £82,000 per year. Now, he came out with these comments on the same day as the universal credit uplift of £20 was taken away by his party. Now, I don't know if Peter is illiterate, but he certainly can't read the room. But for somebody who earns about £6,800 per month, which equals about 340 people having their universal credit uplift removed per week, I think he really should keep his mouth shut. Now, this is the tweet. This is a tweet from Metro and the article. It says, Tory MP has spoken out about the struggles of living on an MP's salary, calling it desperately difficult for some. This comes as Britain's most vulnerable citizens face a cut of £20 per week to the universal credit. Now, you know, MPs can also earn money writing newspaper articles. Ian Duncan Smith does that, earns a, a pretty good, you know, sum from that. Um, and then you also have to remember that MPs receive <laughs> uh, massive expenses. Ian Paisley Jr. in Northern Ireland, uh, I think last year, claimed £250,000 or close to that or around that figure, £250,000 in expenses in a year. You know, so, you know, and they claim expenses for uh, flights, uh, accommodation, food, everything like this. Anyway, I'm sure that, you know, this Tory MP uh, does a lot in his constituency. He cares about the people there. He's, maybe he's raising this issue. You know, we're all, we have to lift all boats. We all have to um, be better off. We all need to be supported. Perhaps he, he supports increasing welfare spending for everyone because he, in a sense, he is on welfare. He's getting money from the government, probably for doing nothing. But let's see what he says about uh, welfare, ben benef welfare spending and benefits. So you can probably imagine he consistently voted for a reduction in spending on welfare benefits, 49 votes for, zero votes against, and he was absent five times. Almost always voted for raising, uh, against raising welfare benefits in line with prices. That's since 2013. Generally voted for making counts, local councils responsible for helping those in financial need uh, afford their council tax and reducing the amount of, uh, of such on such support. This is an offloading responsibility from central government to local government. Almost always voted for reducing housing benefit for social tenants deemed to have excess bedrooms, the, the what Labour deemed as the uh, bedroom tax. Almost always voted against spending public money uh, to create guaranteed jobs for young people. This guy has been living off the dole. Sorry, he has been an MP since 1975. I don't know what he's done before that. <laughs> has he had a job before that? He has been in the House of Commons since 1975. And he has voted against creating jobs for young people. Who the hell votes for these people? And finally, the icing on the cake is consistently voted against paying higher benefits over long, longer periods for those unable to work due to illness or disability. And between 2011 and 2016, zero votes for, 15 votes against. So I hope the people in his constituency are seeing this and realizing why are we voting for this guy? But, you know, I think it's important that, you know, he should listen to those giving advice. Perhaps he should listen to the advice of Boris Johnson or Therese Coffey or Rishi Sunak and get a better job and stop complaining. So I'll see you next time for our next Fool of the Week.